Welcome to Stars Podcast. Through self defense, mixed martial arts, nutrition, family, and all things in between, we share our journey of how we hack our mind and body to get the maximum return out of each day. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the journey. This episode is brought to you by FuzzyMonkeyCoffee.com. You may think you are drinking good coffee, but are you really? Fuzzy Monkey Coffee Company challenges you to buy a bag of our specialty fresh roasted coffee with an exclusive Stars Podcast discount. Visit FuzzyMonkeyCoffee.com and enter Stars POD15 at checkout to get 15% off any bag of coffee or single serve pods. Our light, medium, and dark roast from all over the world will suit anyone's taste buds. Visit www. Dot fuzzymonkeycoffee.com and enter stars pod15 at checkout to get 15% off any bag of coffee or single serve pods. My personal favorite is Squirrel Monkey. It's a little bit of a lighter roast and is perfect for the mornings. Hey guys, welcome back Stars Podcast. This is Ron Jordan coming at you from Rosinante Studios in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Today we have a special guest with us. He is from around the world here. He's a producer. He's learning skills from around the world. And uh, what I saw on your um, on the Instagram is a lot of beautiful artwork. And then also you learning how to do all types of cool new tricks. So I wanted to uh, jump in with you on that. And then also you had reached out to me and um, you let me know that you knew quite a bit about the metaverse and sandbox um, in particular. So welcome to the show. Loic, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Okay, perfect. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks you. Uh, thank you for uh, for having me. That's, uh, it's the first. Uh, you're the first V friend person that I meet. So this is awesome. Cool. Yeah, I get to I get to hold that crown. So just <laughs> so some of you get some backstory from uh, Loic and I today. We were trying to meet in the metaverse and to do this podcast through that uh, Decentraland platform. And we were in the same realm. We were like in the same world, but we couldn't see each other, which was very interesting yeah. and, and hard to figure out. We were, and we didn't figure it out ultimately. So we decided to revert back to um, revert, revert 20, back to 2021, 2021 and do a Zoom call. So here we are. Yeah, that, that works. I mean, eventually we'll we'll find a way for the central end but we were almost there i mean we're in the, we're in the same realm same server same spot but somehow couldn't see each other mm -hmm. yeah i thought i was i thought because i had logged into my laptop and my laptop's just not beefy enough to run a recording program and decentraland so i had to jump on yeah. the bigger computer but i stayed logged in somehow on my laptop yeah which was yeah, very I think you have strange. to log out manually if you really want to get out of the, of the world. Otherwise, it might like something might stay there. Mm -hmm. I think um, because it's relatively early. I mean, early. It's uh, it's not completely out there yet. Uh, the central end. There's still bugs, you know, here and there that they need to figure out. So, but we'll we'll get there. We'll meet and probably eventually there's going to be like a V friends type of event with like tons of little avatars uh, in the central end. That would be fun. And that's really what I see Decentraland being. Let me ask you this, just right out of the gate. How is yeah. Decentraland different from a regular video game that's open world? So the main thing that is different is that Decentraland kind of belongs to the, to the players or the community. Whatever happens in there is based on what people are ready to, to build. So it could be just like complete like um, flat land with nothing on it, but no, people buy land, they buy parcels, and then they try to build whatever they, they want to build really. And the central land in particular is a bit more like um, a place you would hang out. Uh, it's less about crazy experiences uh, like sandbox where you, you have entire games running uh, in the, on the platform. It's more about okay, let's all hang out in this new club in the central land. We're going to listen to this DJ's music uh, or let's go to this art gallery and let's display all of our, our, uh, our NFTs. And th the idea behind the central land is to try to, uh, to have a, another space, another place where you can just bring your friends, showcase your stuff, 
and just like um, connect with other people, I guess. So it's like a virtual hangout spot. Yeah, yeah. The central line is really more about being a virtual hangout spot where you can do whatever you want as long as you own the land. And something like sand the sandbox is a bit of that, but on top of uh, on top of the the hangout aspect, there's a whole idea of you're going to be living an experience if you go to, I don't know, like uh, minus one, minus 10 coordinate, you're going to be living a game there. You're going to play a, a racing game over there. You're going to, I don't know, there's, there's, a, there's a variety of experiences that you can live. You can do that in the central line. It's just a little bit more complicated and less, uh, less convenient. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because I, I went over into the central land the first time that I did it and um, I've, I've you know, rode the dragon and went and did a couple of the, the interactive pieces. And then I went to the events and saw a couple of events that were happening and just sort of jumped to those spots just to explore. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand what sandbox offers. Cause I saw that there's like a, a build build um, function in there. But I'm not able mm -hmm. to really do anything other than that. Is that because I don't own land? So there are multiple things that you can do uh, related to the sandbox. There's creating NFTs, like the, uh, the actual assets that you can use in the, uh, the sandbox. So there's a marketplace where you can buy, I don't know, a car, a dragon, and a pickaxe, whatever you want. And those items are either created directly by sandbox or by people like you and me who, who just want to, uh, to create some art and maybe sell it for, uh, for some sand, which is the, their token that you're using. And once you're on, in um, uh, the sandbox, if you do possess some land, then you can build on it. If you don't, I don't think that you can do that. Um, however, the cool thing about the, the, um, the land system, whether the central land is the central land is the sandbox, is that Let's say I own a parcel and I don't want to do anything on it because I don't have any skills, but I just own it. I can rent that space to someone else who will be creating tons of crazy things on it, but you need to have that land. You need to own that land or you need to have it uh, rented to you to be able to build things on top. As a regular user who doesn't own any land, you can take, uh, you can participate to all the, the various experiences and games that you'll see, but if you want to build and create something, you need to have this, this, this parcel to your name. And right now there are no new parcels. Everything is secondary market. So I think that there was a sale recently and I think they're regularly um, doing those sales. And um, it's, it's a good strategy. Some, some virtual worlds have tried to sell everything in one go. Uh, the idea to really, go parcel, not parcel, but um, sale per sale allows, you know, a little bit of um, hype to grow. Uh, people start understanding it. Hey, this, this virtual world is growing. Mm -hmm. And look, there's now Binance is here. Kraken is here. Uh, all the big uh, NFT influences also here. So you well, feel that's like, what okay, opened my eyes that you could actually see on the parcels, if they're big enough, that there's kind of like brand logos. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think the, the reason why it's working is because think, of, think about it like a little bit like Times Square. When you look at Times Square, you see all this stuff everywhere, like Coca-Cola here, uh, L'Oreal over there, whatever the brand is. And it stays in your mind. You're like, okay, maybe if my name was up there close to Coca-Cola, uh, people are going to want to click and see what, what it's about. And the whole dynamic around uh, the virtual world is about that. Who is where? Where's the attention? Where can I do a little something uh, that will, you know, bring people in, uh, bring some attention to my brand or my game or whatever? Mm -hmm. So, so that's why it's pretty cool to see these worlds expanding and like sales coming uh, one after the other because um, because it means it's growing and it also means that we're, in the, we're here at the right time. Absolutely, yeah. I always think about the the real estate that is close to that of what's going on. Like it's got to be up. Obviously there's going to be a premium there. However, you can jump everywhere. So what yep. is, 
what's the point of trying to be closer to them if you can just get into the metaverse just on the outskirts of town because I can just jump to wherever I want to go. So it, it comes with the, um, with a simple question. If, if someone has a, a land piece of land completely like somewhere completely remote, the odds are of someone else clicking specifically get there to go see what, what what's happening over there are fairly low. They would sure. only click there if they know that there's something hidden. But if you're just hanging out near, I don't know, um, uh, the Nifty Gateway uh, parcel, which is a huge parcel, or next to a, a big influencer as well, if you just turn around the corner, you might see something else. And, and maybe that's your parcel. You have like, you, you decide to buy something. It's right around the corner. So the odds are that someone else finds your stuff um, uh, are much higher. Yeah, th- that's that's pretty natural just it's like being at the mall if i'm at the mall i'm going to see all of those stores versus i'm not going to see my house because i'm at the mall um my i guess my thought process is like if you have a community that you wanted to introduce to the metaverse and you wanted to do it in a kind of underdog way going to the outskirt of town and then just introducing them to your spot you could you could be the catalyst that actually grows that spot hundred percent. And I think that's completely fine. A lot, a lot of people actually do that. I think mm-hmm. they buy uh, some land where it's less expensive. It's, it may be a little bit farther to the North, East or West or whatever, but because they have a community behind them, it's, it's almost like a private secret spot. Right. And you start building from there. It's, it's, it's almost a little bit like a VIPs only know, right. The, the, the cool thing is all this uh, attention and all the, the where's the hype all that is very um flexible like things things are fluid you can you can have all the hot stuff happen in central plaza around but maybe some new player comes in when gary v decides to buy uh decentraland or like sandbox and says hey you know what the v friends theme park is now located over there it's completely Mm -hmm. new guarantee suddenly people are going to come in and say wow this is the place to be right so it's a cool, it's a cool thing. Um, the, the only, it's not a problem, but I think that it, the central line, for example, is, is kind of expensive, like for a regular person to get, to get some Yeah, it's land. like $9,000 from what I saw, like for just a, a parcel. Yeah. It, it depends on when you go or on where you go. And, the, and there's always some, like some flipping game happening. You can find some underpriced parcels and whatnot, but, but generally speaking, it's a, uh, it's, it's a bit of an expensive game. It's less expensive uh, uh, on uh, in Sandbox, and there are other virtual worlds as well, which are starting to grow, uh, that are less expensive. But it's a little bit like real estate in, in real life. Like you, it, it is expensive globally because you're talking mm-hmm. about space that you own that people can gonna interact with. They're gonna see your stuff. They can you can rent it to them. So yeah, it almost feels like it is that that spot to me feels like early days of what a website was yeah like you're, yeah, you're, yeah totally. you should have a spot in the metaverse for people to visit because that's where they're going to go now to see who you are like what are 100%. you about yeah is that something that you you're so you're like you're close to the sandbox project and i don't know how much you can or can't talk about it but i'd love to just understand what the near-term future looks like for for the metaverse and yeah let's just start there what does the near term look like what what advances are we going to see in 2021 into 2022 so i think globally uh and specifically for the sandbox globally it's more more games are going to start coming out more experiences and um that that's that's basically the focus making sure that if you're a new user going to the sandbox or going to the central end, you've got stuff to do and stuff to see. So for the sandbox in particular, that's that's new games, that's uh, entire experiences that come a little bit like a, like a, a, a gift box. You, you, you enter the game and now you jump to this, this part of the world and there is a fully fledged experience for you to, to try out. 
So that's the type of thing that uh, that is gonna just continue uh, growing and, and appearing throughout 2021. Do you see an emerging market for folks to be part of that process on the build side? Is that a is that some sort of growth market that you're like working with universities or other tech agencies to create more people to build? So I don't know if there are official channels for that in particular, but I do know that there are people who are people who do own land, whether in the central land or um, or the sandbox who want to involve, you know, uh, different communities who want to teach them how to, how to build. Um, I, I have heard the, of, um, I think there was, maybe it was a sandbox for now, but there was uh, someone who had some land and who wanted to use creating um, uh, some, some assets as a, something for a class. So basically you go, you, you're, you're in your class, you're, you're, you're a kid, and you're introduced to this NFT world and this NFT space by putting together uh, some, some assets and thinking about how you, how you could create these assets. So I, I think it's cool. There's a lot to do. There's really cool. and there's a lot to um, to to learn for for everyone. So there is an opportunity for people who who want to um, to to teach or who want to spread the word about the NFT world, there is an opportunity for them to, to do that in things like um, Decentraland or sand, the Sandbox. I guess my question is, is surrounding, is there a lack of people in the industry to help it grow or is it better for this? Like, is it growing the right way now at the, at the pace that it's growing now? Like, do you feel comfortable with that? Or would you like to see, like, if we just had more, content creators we could this could get even bigger faster or is it good where it's at and it's progressing the way that it's supposed to be so so that's only my personal opinion but i think uh it could be done better in the sense that there could be more about uh evangelizing a little bit all this stuff um it's i don't think it's being held back but i don't think there it's en- enough is, is done to really make it like, okay, let's, let's take it to the next level. Let's grow like faster and, and, and wider. Now, one of the reasons might be because it's still not, you know, out completely out same for the, for the central end to some extent, maybe it's a, uh, it's by design. Maybe they're, they're, they're waiting to, um, to be at, a, at a, I don't know, like an, a later version of the game or later version of the platform to really bring in like the big guns and the, uh, to expand, like not exponentially, but like way, way bigger. So maybe it's on, it's by design. I, I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. And that would make sense. It would make sense to just be more, um, you know, let's get all the bugs worked out before we go big. And, and that's totally cool. So let's get more into who the week is like, yeah, I saw some of your videos. I saw your Instagram page. You have some beautiful art on there. It's your photography. You. I assume that that's your photography. Yep. That's on there. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. It's bright. It's eye popping. And I'm and then I look at your 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 home and it's white. It's blank. My home or or where you're at your office rather. Oh yeah, yeah, where my home right? initially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the little story about where I live, um, where I live, the, um, so I'm trying, I've been trying to have this sort of nomad lifestyle since uh, the whole pandemic uh, started and uh, we were allowed to work from home. I thought, okay, I'm moving to a different country. I was supposed to move here with my, my girlfriend and, uh, and then the pandemic hit. So eventually we, 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 sep- uh, uh, we split up. But I was living in Canada and I had a home there with my girlfriend and, and like tons of things in the house. And then we decided to move to the UK. And, um, and then the pandemic hit and I thought, okay, it's an, it's an opportunity now to see if I can change my lifestyle from being a place that is full of little objects and full of stuff to a much more minimalistic uh, lifestyle. So. This place here is actually an Airbnb, which I've, I've been living in for uh, a few weeks. And before to stay in here longer, 
I was just hopping from one place to another uh, with like two bags on my So that's the type of life I can try. I'm, uh, I'm living, uh, kind of trying to live a bit of a nomad lifestyle. And uh, that's why there's nothing here. But going back to what I do, so at the same time uh, the pandemic hit, I decided to try to um, uh, learn more skills and specifically art skills. Uh, so I have this, this YouTube channel where I learn skills in general. It's, it's been like a, a project of mine to learn as many skills as I can in different, different domains and different parts of the world. And I thought, okay, let's try to improve my, my Photoshop skills, which were close to, um, close to being like non-existent uh, before last year. So I tried to do that, learned, and, um, and I tried first with, uh, f- photo manipulations on, in Photoshop. And then since I take pictures as well, portraits, I tried to modify the portraits I was uh, taking. And eventually, uh, people started liking it and asked me for, uh, for portraits uh, as well. And, and yeah, and now I'm doing those uh, sort of realistic befriends. And I'm, cre- I'm putting together my, um, my own little NFT project. Hope will be, will be interesting and fun. I have uh, some utility. So yeah, trying to, keep, to stay busy, I, th- I think. Yeah, what is, the, what is the NFT project that you're working on? If you want right, so to explain. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I've always been a fan of uh, um, space in general. And I like things. So I thought, okay, can I create, can I how create, put the two together? And first thing that came to mind was creating some, um, some planets, uh, planets that would have a, a, a cute personality attached to them. So, so not really in the sense, not like all those, uh, those camels and cats and whatnot, but more, um, more like you would have a, a stone planet. It's going to tell you made out of stone, a lava planet, a uh, whatever planet. And, the idea behind that project is if you buy one of those planets, it's going to be like one type of, of each. Um, and there's going to be tons of types. If you invest in, for example, the lava planet, uh, you're starting to invest in, um, in that little world, in that little planet world. So what's going to come after that is the inhabitants of that planet. So I'm going to create some, some little lava uh, blobs or little characters uh, very very simple but th- the idea is to try to create some sort of continuity so if you are super invested in the lava planet then what i would like to do i don't know how i'm going to do it yet but um it, i would give you the opportunity to to chip in and add some ideas and participate to the creation of those lava blobs so you have the lava planet and now you're like okay maybe those uh, those lava guys have uh, crowns on their heads cool let me to the character the holders will feel uh involved in the project and they will feel like okay uh i participated in the creation of the next nfts so that's kind of the vision and uh i think it's also because i um makes me try something else again in photoshop uh, creating some uh some 2d 3d uh little planets um, so yeah, from it's an opportunity to, to try uh, creating NFTs, but also just to have fun creating uh, some cute, uh, some cute characters and planets. So you said there's some utility behind it. What is the utility side of it? So the utility, maybe, maybe that's the wrong word, but um, if I do this right and it's still just on paper, but this idea that you can have a community that owns those those uh, those little worlds and participate uh, into those worlds and bringing suggestions for the future NFTs, that's something that I think is, um, I mean, I would like to have a project like that where if I hold an ape, let's say, which I don't, unfortunately, but let's say I, hope, uh, I hold an ape and um, because I hold that ape, then I can influence whatever is coming next for the apes. Uh, but for my for, for my ape in particular, and I think that would be that would be pretty interesting. I would feel like okay, this NFT is not just the art; it's also there's some utility because I feel like I I'm now 
invested in the in the in the in the ape or nft in general so there's a bit of that and also i think that um because i've always been a bit of a storyteller that's 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 why i uh I, I I make video games today. Uh, that's why I write. Um, I've written a novel and things like that. And that's why I also tell people's stories in general, and learn about their stories. I want to sort of try to create a little universe as a per per planet. Mm-hmm. So there's like a backstory. There's like a little um, something happening around each little planet. Right. And right. might not be utility, but at least it's it's a bit more than just the art. Yeah. So there was, there's a project that I'm involved in. uh, It's crypto skeleton punks. And part of, part of their discussion in their discord is creating a story for your character. And they're actually giving you a character. If you submit a story. Oh, that's really cool. That's really, yeah, it is really neat. And, and you have a, now your character, like number four five oh nine, that's my character. Now he has a story because I wrote it. That is awesome. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah that's a- why I'm like I'm connecting the dots with you a hundred percent because me as a user or as a as a NFT owner of the crypto skeleton punks, I was like, uh, yeah, duh, I'm gonna write my story. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That that's something that I think is not done enough um in nft projects where you give back to the token holders and you and you really make them feel like their uh their nft is special their character is special and well it's like any other sales any other sale that you ever do you want to do supplemental sales to that person and if you can exactly or or not just sales but you do the initial sale but then you should give value after that yeah, and I, and I think that's something that's unfortunately out of all the tons of animal projects that are coming out, um, while it's sometimes written on this like elusive roadmap in practice, it's a lot just about the art, which is fine. But I think the the real winners I was I was talking about this in uh, in the Insiders Clubhouse yesterday, the real winners in a are going to be the ones that whatever it is um, of the token holder and they feel that okay I want to invest in this and I'm going to continue investing uh, in the in that project in the future because I yeah. feel like I'm part of it you know well and it, and it's fun it's interactive it's fun yeah. it, yeah, it gives yeah. more than just like looking at this thing in my gallery like I'm an active participant now and and that's yeah and that's a whole different thing and that's what i think v friends has done even though that there's not there's not any like uh not anything like we're talking about but there is interaction which makes it fun a hundred percent and that's why it's space for me because the reason why i got into games in the first place and why i've been making games for a, a bit more than a decade now is because of the interactivity like i feel like for me the best experience that you can give someone is if they're they're living it or like they're they're taking part in something actively and you can do that in a game like you create a story characters interactions and then a player plays it and experiences this and for any the main <laughs> one no the main one really is um like you as a as a game developer in this nft space you're obviously bullish on on the design of of the networks and in the metaverse what do you see as as like a drawback or a barrier to entry right now for somebody that is um just getting into it and what advice do you give them um for me the biggest barrier of entry is uh the new technology yeah in order to to get into this, you need to learn how to, and, it, and it's not complicated, but it's just when you start talking to people about uh, cryptocurrency, which is different than than dollars uh, or fiat, when you talk to them about, oh, you need a wallet, uh, a MetaMask, uh, this is your address, and this is where your stuff is stored. Don't worry, it's safe. But is it really all this technical lingo is the difficult part? So I think that um, if like my best advice, like my take on this to make things easier would be to have a, um, 
a very simple way to communicate that to people who are outside the NFT space. And if you take, for example, Nifty Gateway, which was a, uh, a big uh, platform to bringing people into the NFT world, the way they did that was, okay, we're going to remove all the part about NFT, uh, about Ethereum, about wallets and whatnot, and we're going to allow you to pay with your credit card. So it's kind of not playing the game the same way, but a lot of people got some NFTs and then they understood that, um, oh, there's, this is how it works. Uh, you can sell, uh, you've got all the, the, the track, uh, all the, the history of all the sales, and then they can start looking into NFTs in general. So I think the best way to bring someone in is to probably explain a user project that is simple to understand and stagger the explanation of the technical stuff. Uh, I think Gary did it really, really well by forcing people to not use credit cards. But at the same time, I know a lot of people who didn't get into it because they were like, ah, oh, this, this sounds a little bit bizarre. Like, like I have to use Ethereum, like a, a MetaMask wallet and whatnot. So I don't know, in a few words, I say, make it simpler. And if you have to go through the technical stuff, stagger the explanation to, to yeah, really start like bit stones. by bit. Yeah, stepping yeah. stones. Now, let me ask you this real quick. Where can they find you? What's the name of your project? And wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, so you can find me at Tell Me World uh, without the O, W R L D. It's pretty much where I, I post all my stuff um, for Instagram, but also on YouTube. And the project for the uh, the NFT is not coming. It's not up yet, but uh, I'll give you the, the the teaser for the name. I think I'm gonna call this Meta Planets. So it's gonna be Meta Planets everywhere. Love it. All right. Thank you, Loic. Appreciate you. And uh, thanks as a lot, always, Ron. guys. That was enjoy the journey. Yeah, dude, that was fun. That was really cool. Thanks for having me, uh, Ron. And uh, I hope we can uh, speak again for your other questions. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We will. As long as you'll come back, you do have one of my NFTs now. So there's a one hour utility on that. hundred percent. And <laughs> you look at your wallet because Meta Planets may be coming your way. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. See you Ron. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for sticking around until the very end. If you wouldn't mind, please leave us a review and rate us wherever you have downloaded this podcast from. If you found any value in it, please put that in your comment. We'd love to hear back from you. Also, if you haven't done this yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us on Instagram, stars underscore podcast, and definitely get in our Discord. That's where all things are happening. So the VIP access tokens are happening there. Um, we are also launching information about new projects in that Discord. So again, follow the Discord, follow the YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. Those are the places that we're going to be dropping the most information. Thank you guys so much. Again, leave us a review if you can. If not, we'll see you next time. And as always, enjoy the journey.